Oh, shoot. It's live now. Hi, everyone. Um, just bear with me for just a... No, I need you to go out and then go into the studio. Um, so we had some technical difficulties. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. We had some technical difficulties, so we had to start the stream all over. Yay for us. It wouldn't be a season if we did not ever, uh, you know, that's bizarre. Why did it bizarre, do? bizarre. Um, so we tried to do the intro, but um, every time we started the intro, so I'm not going to touch the intro. Mm. Um, and so every time I started the intro, it said we were live, and then all of a sudden it said, no, this has been shut down. So I'll look into that later, but mm. uh, hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> Annabella. I know, Eddie Mac, Omega. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to okay. Let's Have a Fifi. We done fuck shit up. And um, this is season 11, episode 29? 29. 29. And yeah, for more than 10 years, we've been fucking this shit up on a Wednesday night. <laughs> we haven't um, broken the internet in a hot minute, though. So. <laughs> and like when I used to do it, it used to be because I was connecting everything. And so right. now it's like, now that it's easier like it's weird that it's breaking without my help <laughs> i just um, wanted but... you to feel nostalgic <laughs> no 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 i don't like it i don't like it take it back <laughs> um if you are on the interwebs please share this episode because i think that the people that saw the original scheduled episode are probably looking for us but We'll find um, out. Let's see. Um, Freddie Prince Charming over there, looking ice cold, ice cold. It, it's yes, but not really. If I had the antenna and stuff, I would look like the Andorian oh. that I'm supposed to be. But I didn't. Not I'm not wearing the antenna. Number one, we don't have the prosthetic yet. It should be here this week. And number two. It, the more you wear a prosthetic like that, the less smooth the edges get. So even if I had it, I wouldn't wear it. But I need to practice my my makeup. Uh, what are we talking about it- tonight? We talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about sex trivia. We're talking about all of it. All, all the things. things. All the things. But first, I got to get through the housekeeping. Mm-hmm. Um, we were a little thrown off because uh, <laughs> um the live stream wouldn't start at all. But um, if you want to continue to support us, you can support us on Patreon where we uh, just randomly drop tidbits and things. Um, I know, I'm late on some stuff and I'm sorry. Um, This week was crazy. Work actually wanted me to work. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, yeah. Which I don't Uh, don't understand. You can do that on patreon.com slash let's have a fee (sighs) We'd like to thank our patrons. And that was not a sigh of whatever. Um... (laughs) But we'd like to thank our patrons, uh, Brandon, Chris, and Michelle, D, Drake Jensen, Casey Starr, Carrie, and Corey, Jim, uh, Kim, Kim, I started reading both of them at the same time, Kim, Joan, Leanne, Nicole, and Shannon, as well as we'd like to specially thank uh, Success Boutique, LC Designs, and Wigs of a Kind. I heard there's a rumor that I may or may not receive hair in the next couple weeks. Ooh, that's Mm. exciting. Uh Uh-huh. And you can help us do better. (laughs) You can slide us a dollar or two uh, by tipping us at paypal.me slash let's have a fifi. You could text LHAF to 602-730-7379. Because I send show updates sometimes. I did sometimes. try to do one this afternoon, but like Freddie said, did, work wanted me to work, and I was like, "What? I I like need to do stuff that I don't not understand. This. Like, I'm like, why? Why do you want me to work all of a sudden? Like, we've been slow, and now you want me to do these things? Like, yeah, don't they understand? Like, I have other things that I need to do. Well, I'm getting off of two days of graduation, so I thought, you yeah. know, like 
today would be like slow day. And no, mm. it's not slow day. Anyhow, mm. hi, DJ Image. Um, and if you're on Facebook, which I think most of you are, um, you can uh, click the star button somewhere um, and give us stars and we get uh, a portion of that ducket straight to our bucket. Like I said, you can help us help us be better. That sounds like mm. our cause. Help us be better. Mm. I know, damn paying jobs. Yeah. You know, what the hell? This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> How was your weekend? It was good. It was busier than anticipated. Um, like, because Saturday we took a couple of kids to breakfast and then one of them had a volleyball game and then oh. we had sex trivia that night, which sex trivia is always fun. Like, I like sex trivia. It's what I like. Oh, so you had a like, domesticated life and then you came out to the nightlife? I did. I did. Oh, you wow. Know. You're so domesticated. But, I am. But it was, it, it was fun, except th- that one fucking table. Y'all, don't be those people and don't let your drunk friend be that guy. Oh. Like, oh my God, this table was like, it was a second round. This table comes in and it was a gaggle of drunk Obvious ass millennials. Right. And Wait, they sp- there's an important message in front of you. Um, you made your partner oh, I'm so order sorry. food. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. So, so disturbing. Okay, go on. Mm-hmm. Um, so this table of drunk millennials is there. They're spilling shit all over the whiteboards. And then they're like, this doesn't fucking work, man. Well, of course it doesn't fucking work. Your whiteboard is wet, you dumb ass. Like, oh my God. The uh, funny part is watching him get mad. And I just start ignoring folks because I... I know what it's like to it's be just, those people. It's, anyway, it's, uh, and it's I just obnoxious. like don't 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 <laughs> let your friend be that person. And security had to go over there and talk to him because they were all being like annoying. Like just uh... well, the first things first. They started yelling out answers, and then um, I the had wrong to... answers. Yes, and then I had to like go over a little bit because um, they started looking at other people's answers and making other. Uh, other people uncomfortable so yeah don't be those people don't be those people if you can't drink without getting wasted and being obnoxious out in public then don't go out in public drink at home and be obnoxious there to the people that you live with just saying and maybe they can't stand you so right Mm -hmm. maybe stop drinking um Sunday was Mother's Day and basically my partner asked for two things which was get the house clean and actually she, well, two things being two things like, like she an wanted everyday thing. Yeah. Uh, the, she wanted the kids to help with cleaning the house. And she asked me for a specific kind of breakfast. And then she asked for a specific dinner. So it was, I helped inside with the kids with cleaning and tidying up. And we've discovered that the youngest has no sweeping skills. She cannot sweep. That, so she's walking around trying to hold the broom with one hand and, and the thing and trying to sweep as she goes. Huh. Which isn't working very well. And then she, I just cleaned the counters. Who's whistling at your house, Felicia? Who else? Because uh, <laughs> not like we've been doing this for 10 years, Scotty. Um, and uh, she took the, the dustpan and put the dustpan on my clean counter and I said just put it on the floor and she's like what why would I put it on the floor the floor is dirty I'm like but that's where the dustpan came from the dustpan was on the floor I very 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 interesting it's very interesting so we discovered that she can't sweep Hmm. um but that's okay she's good at other things she's got she did like a choir concert the other night um, she got one oh, award. Oh, she sings? I did not know that. She had a choir concert the other night. Um, <laughs> it was cute. They had like, there's like four different choirs. There's like, 
it's interesting. She's in the the like the mm. medium level choir, I think thereabouts. But it was it was cute for the most part. Um, mm. And then she like she won an award like this morning or yesterday morning or no this morning at like seven o'clock in the morning. I had to go out and get on a meeting, so I wasn't able to be there. And then there's like choir <laughs> awards that are happening. Um, Oh my That's god! That's fine. They can hear me. The choir phone. was fine. The choir was good. The girl says you're rude. Listen, mixed choir was something. Okay, and there's this other choir that did um, that did uh, a medley of songs from Legally Blonde, including the Bend and Snap. Mind you, these are middle schoolers. Oh. Middle schoolers. Okay, and they're doing the Bend and Snap. Which, if anybody's seen Legally Blonde, the whole point of the bend and snap is to, like, okay, these girls are, like, 13 and 14 years old. And, like, the choreography was all doing, like, this shit. And, like, as soon as they did that, the entire audience kind of (laughs) went. It's kind of like that scene in Mean Girls when they slap their butts. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's fine. We're, We're not worried about people sexualizing middle school girls. Totally fine. It's totally okay, fine. but somehow we're shutting down prides because drag queens. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And while we were busy doing stuff inside and cleaning and, and cooking and things like that, uh, Dee was actually working outside on the yard. She got a hold of the pressure washer and then we didn't see her for like six hours. Um, she pressure washed everything. I think she might have pressure washed the dog. I don't know, but she pressure washed everything. Um, but the pool is about where it's supposed to be. We're getting it just still like getting the, the, the chlorine mm-hmm. and the chemicals and the salt and all that stuff situated. Um, mm-hmm. But we're almost there. Thank God. Because it's getting really fucking hot. Um, and then for the last couple of days, I'm just going to throw this out there. I've been watching this shit unfold on Facebook. Have you been paying any attention Mm-mm. I've been working mm. like 14 hour days for the last two days. Oh, that's I true. Don't have, I don't have so I, two weeks ago, we talked about holding people accountable in, in whatever community you're in. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, and how like lately there's been a number of times when I want to be like, I fucking told you so like a decade ago about this person over here. Right. Mm-hmm. So apparently there's, Shit that is hitting the fan with somebody else that we both know, both worked with, and both know is kind of problematic. And I'm like, again, could have told you this a while back, but this is very vague, nobody ever listens. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you, if you, it, like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I fucking told you so. I told all of you that this was a fucking problem. Uh-huh. Uh, for you know it a number it, of reasons right it's folks that um live south of us oh mm. and i'm wondering now what the trigger was that caused all the fucking fallout over this because none of this shit is new none of it like none of it but now all of a sudden people are trying to hold other people accountable and i'm like okay but None of this is fucking new. So, okay. So I'm just sitting back because nobody ever wants to listen to me. So I'm just like, all right, well, maybe y'all will finally listen to all these other people that are saying shit, but it's fine. So how wow. was your weekend? Um, so I did see you post about go to the 16th mark. I read that really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that today? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because uh, I was like, ooh, people must have watched the, the Fifi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Thursday and Friday, I had to stay home with the baby, uh, not the baby, baby, but the older baby, the other baby. Yeah. Um, because so not were... Scott, <laughs> no, mm-hmm. um, that would have been nicer than what I was doing, but, um, mm. there was a lot of cleanup. Let's just not gross everybody out by talking about that. Yeah. But, um, Saturday night we did, uh, sex trivia and um, I want to say that some of the teams were really into it. And then there were some people that showed up in the second round that were sex experts. And I could mm. hear them talking about answers. Mm-hmm. I think that they think because I'm not really paying attention and I'm sitting at the computer mm-hmm. that I can't hear them. Mm-hmm. But I have news for a lot of you, I can hear really well 
And so, like, I hear conversations and I'm, like, thinking myself, like, especially the numbing creams. I don't know what it is with y'all and the numbing creams, but y'all are into it and need to be safe about it. But um, I just hear some answers and I think, how have we misled you? How has life led you this far? And you... Oh. That was my doorbell. (laughs) Someone is at the worst one. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Babe, there's somebody at the door. (laughs) You made her order food. I'm sorry. Anyway. (laughs) This is just going to be one of those episodes. It is. uh, It's it's fine. (laughs) So... I just want y'all to know that I encourage you to come back to Sex Trivia. Um, We need to have this on a weekly basis. We need to talk to Gracie's about that. Oh my god, how many times are they going to ring the doorbell? Answer the fucking door. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Excuse us. Real life is happening around Lord. Oh, he pressed the doorbell. What the fuck? (laughs) Really? Oh, my God. Uh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love episodes like this. Anyway, um, Sunday, pretty pretty chill. Uh, Worked yesterday and the day before that, 14 hours. Yay. Um, And then had a, a little... Rehearsal before this. That's, mm. well, that's mm-hmm. good. Is mm-hmm. it? How's it coming? Is it coming along? Is it good? Yes. Hmm. At least people we need show to, be up to be... your rehearsal. Uh, well, it was on Zoom, but also hey, yeah, need... the last one I had was too. And I mean, as soon as I up, it's fun. <laughs> I do my best when I can, but um, yeah. So. That I I can't wait to see all of these things come together and be. One I think piece. it'll be good. We're yeah. like down to the wire, like really down to the wire, but it's fine. Um, also, if you have not got your tickets for Fan Fusion, you should do that. I think. Mm-hmm. I think there might even be a few of the VIP tickets left in terms of seating. Yeah. So. Um, you want to see uh, the drag show at uh, Phoenix Fan Fusion. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you don't get a VIP uh, seat, uh, it's first come, first serve. And I will tell you that the seats go way back. Yep. And they're yep. not elevated. Nope. The stage is elevated, but mm, still. <laughs> Maybe bring your binoculars if you plan on mm, being late. Give opera glasses. Opera glasses. Yeah. Just... Opera glasses. So on the uh, on the lines of like, you know, rehearsals and and all that thing. uh, This actually, I was thinking about this today, and I'm like, this is I don't like we've we've talked about this sort of thing in like passing, but we've never actually like talked about it. So I figured that that tonight would be a good time to sort of talk about the whole like it's not personal, it's business. Mm. Because. We've all had to deal with it, you know, when it's the the lines of business and friendship like cross and those lines get blurry and it opens the door to things like hurt feelings and resentment when you don't get the treatment you think you're entitled to because of your friendship with whatever person it is. Mm. And like in the drag and burlesque world, there's a lot of that that crossover. A lot of people hang out with, date other performers because that's not you your obviously. bubble is you know and like mind you i don't i don't do a lot of producing these days but when i do it's usually for you know bigger events like steampunk con or like fan fusion and things like that like it's i feel it's like somebody thing. like me has asked you to but you just deny me deny you what oh it's but there's we don't have a venue good enough for what you want me to do because like, huh. huh. there isn't um 
But when I'm producing something like that, with it, and regardless of whether it's a small event or a bigger event or whatever it is, if I'm producing, it means I'm going to be a stickler for things like deadlines, rehearsals, stuff like that. Mm. You know, it, which I'm like, this is, I don't know why anybody good? else would want to drop the ball on that. Like, I think we're good. You know, I'm like... I've seen, I have seen queens complain about why do we need to send music in early for shit? And I'm like, okay, but mm-hmm. if the producer is saying, I need your music by this date, then what's the fucking problem? Especially if it's for a bigger thing. Like if it's for a bar show, all right, maybe like you can send it in later, but so people like to have their shit ready. I'm kind of iffy. Trying to scramble last minute, like I'm iffy when it's at a bar, and uh, I do know that some people like to just have all the music together, so that when they go to the bar, they give it to the DJ, say this is how it's gonna go, and this is where it. Um, but for like little ditties, I sometimes I'm like, it's, I mean, it's hard because like even for like even for bar shows, it's a pain in the ass running around trying to get everybody's music, making sure it all works. Mm-hmm. Making, Cause how many times have we gone to like, you know, gone to a bar show or whatever and somebody's music doesn't want to fucking play or they're mm-hmm. like, fine, here's the YouTube link. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> like, no, no. Like that. This just, I don't know. Like, and I've seen people go, you know, completely radio silent in groups, even though they're posting on social media, you know, I've seen people try to, kind of overstep their boundaries because they happen to be friends with like a producer or something and kind of take over or like mm. throw their weight around. And here's the thing. Okay. When He's it comes not talking to... about me, no. I can promise you. That. <laughs> no. So, but, but, okay. So, so here's the thing. Okay. When it, when it comes to shows or, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for me, but I feel like this should really be common practice. And it's kind of not like there's a lot of nepotism and stuff that happens a lot of nepotism that happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it comes to things that I'm producing, my whole thing is it's not personal, it's business. You know, if there is a deadline for music or promo materials, tipping QR codes, whatever the fuck it is, if you don't get me that shit, then there's going to be consequences. Like it's really fucking easy. It's called accountability and responsibility. If for any other fucking job, if there's a deadline that you're given and you don't make the deadline, there's consequences. We're fucking adults. Like we should know how this works. Like if you don't take performing seriously enough to do what you need to do, then maybe you shouldn't be performing. Like I'm just, you know, because it's still a fucking job. It's still you've committed to do something and be somewhere. So, so can I put this into a different perspective? So I work with entertainers and entrepreneurs in a different capacity. And sometimes I will be approached uh, in a way that I'm like, no, I, I need to have ample time. I don't do this. Like you give it to me the same day and I turn things out the same day. That's not, how that works and so um i've gotten better with timing um i can say but um when you um if when you um put it on the person like as if it's their fault that you didn't plan um then that's when i as the creative go "Mm, no and it took me a long time to uh, be able to hold people accountable and say, you know, like, I, I can't do that. Uh, right. And it, it actually happened to me this week. So um, there's no way that I could have done something for someone on Monday or Tuesday. I was at the end of the day. I'm not coming home to bend over backwards for that. I, I, I have a personal responsibility to take care of myself. And if I say no, you should know that I have thoroughly thought about it because I'm a yes person. Mm. If, and if I am telling, you no, like, right. Right. That's just, and accept the no and move on. And it's not personal. It's, 
strictly A, I need to take care of myself and B, business. I don't, I'm not a pizza person. Don't send me something and then go, okay. Right. Like that's not, it's not like a, you know, 30 minute delivery or it's free kind of thing. Like, and I, I mean, maybe my standards are too high. I don't know. Because from what I've seen, people seem to let a lot of shit just slide, which I would not let slide. Mm. So if you no call, no show on a show, if you just don't fucking show up, that was your one and only chance with me. That's it. I don't care if we're friends. I don't care if we've worked together before. I don't care. Uh, I will never invite you to be a part of something again after that. I just won't. And especially if you don't even address it after the fact, like at all, if you're not, Hey, I'm really sorry. Like if you don't even, if you just nothing, that's a problem for me. And Mm. not only will I never invite you, but I, if people ask me to recommend people, you will never be someone that I recommend because you blew it. Like you didn't fucking show up to a job. Like that's, I, and for some reason, there are people that do that a lot and still manage to get booked a lot or have their own shows and or have their own shows. And I'm like, how the fuck does this even happen? Like, and like, if I know people that like, they've no called no showed on me and come to find out it's something that they've done regularly, but people still book. I'm like, I don't care how talented you are. I don't care. Like that's, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to chance it and book it and then have you bail again. Like I can't, I can't do that. You know, that's like, that's putting my reputation on the line. And like, and this is something that is, I'm going to say this right now. If you know that you are a part of a large event that is happening and most of the communication is happening primarily in like a group online or in social media, like a Facebook group or whatever, because that's the easiest way to get people together without having a fucking group chat where people go, on ta- I hate group chats for shit because people go on fucking tangents and then <laughs> it's like notification, 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 notification. It's fucking annoying. Guilty. I hate that shit. So I will never put people in a group chat. I will put, you know, people in a, in a group or whatever. Right. And if you know that that is the case, if you know that you are a part of whatever this thing is and that, you know, there are things that are happening in that group and you don't interact or respond or whatever within that group, The chances of you being asked to come back in the future, probably not. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to chase your ass down and be like, hey, did you see this post? No, I shouldn't have to do that. Like the, which is like with the fan fusion group, I'm like, turn your notifications on so that you see if something gets posted in the group, because both myself and Guido post things in that group. And if you don't see them. Well, and so... The funny part is, like, uh, I know how this stuff works. Anyway, um, <laughs> I know how this stuff works. Uh, so, like, since you know people in common, it will, uh, like, if um, who the other day, somebody commented the other day. So, I didn't initially see you post, but I saw that it said, somebody commented on Freddie's post in the group. Right. So then it's like reminding you like three times that, right. especially as everybody goes and you're friends with those people. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's hidden. Right. It's if, there. You know what I mean? And if you're one of those people that you forget, set a fucking reminder on your phone for like every couple of days to go check some shit because I, like I said, I'm not going to chase you down. If you don't get things oh, to me I was or whatever. At first, and then now like, y'all are putting stuff in there. I got to catch up. Mm-hmm. Like I have, I have a lot of friends that perform. Like we both, mm-hmm. we, we know a lot of performers, whether it's drag, burlesque, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like we know a lot of performers mm-hmm. and some of them are really fucking talented. Like some of them really are, but also some of them, I will never ask to be a part of a show that I'm producing because of previous fuck ups. Like, Mm -hmm. especially if it's, if it's a one-time thing and it's something relatively minor, all right, I might give you another shot, but if you do it again, if you do something major and then. The thing that used to bother me back in the day when I produced a show was that you said yes to a booking. I had set aside money for you. 
and discovered that you had gone to another show. To oh, go. oh God, I remember people would do that shit all the fucking time. Like, it's not... It, it, it's it's not okay like you know and it, it's not that i don't think that you know people are bad performers but mm. the professionalism isn't there and that affects my reputation if i'm booking people that aren't professional they don't get their shit together Ooh, they bail on, on a this. show yeah um yeah. so i have a problem with this too um <sighs> uh, so our push is to be public forward, right? Um, don't put things on the internet that you wouldn't want. I always say this. Don't put stuff on the internet that you wouldn't want it printed on the newspaper because it lasts forever and people remember forever, right? And so, like... And even if you delete, people have screenshots. Yes. And so, like, don't... First and foremost, if you're going to, because there, I support mental health. And in some instances, some folks have canceled because of mental health issues. Let's say that first. I know family issues come up. I know all that. Talk to the show director or whoever booked you first. Talk to whoever might be in the show who might be concerned about you next. And then, if necessary... Say, I have removed myself from these bookings because of personal reasons. Right. You don't even need to go but, into all the details because somebody right. all go but into Talk to the fucking detail. director, producer, whatever first because otherwise if I see it on Facebook, I'm going to be like, were you not going to fucking tell me? I mean, like, and that's just... the disappointment. Yeah. And with the algorithms, you don't see shit on Facebook. Like, uh, uh, like well, I, I and... don't. I... I'm so sorry when people walk up to me and say, didn't you see it on Facebook? No. I literally see the same, like, five posts on Facebook. And I don't understand why that is, but mm, whatever. Like, it's very <laughs> bizarre. I don't know why it does that. Like it, oh, But, and that's the thing, is that it is not personal. It's business. And when your lack of professionalism affects my business, that's where I draw the line. We can still be friends. I'm just not going to book you for shit. Plain and simple. Like, I'm still going to say hi. I'm still going to be like, hey, how you doing? Whatever. But... I won't book you and I won't recommend you to other people. And I won't be like, Oh yeah, take this person. Cause they're really great. Like I just won't do it. Cause I don't want to put somebody else in a position where they potentially have someone that no call, no shows and just bails on a fucking show. Like I am not. And another you know. perspective, another perspective is if you're working with another business person on something and you've hired someone else instead it's fair to let the other person know that you're not working with, that you've hired somebody else so that they don't go through the effort of something right. that you asked them for. Right. This is, this is basic shit y'all. Like I don't, but I, I feel don't like don't be sending me messages asking whose name. Cause mm. that don't matter. Don't it, it's all of y'all. <laughs> if you are somebody's friend, don't feel obligated to book them if you don't think that they're going to show up or whatever or be professional or if you don't think they're a good entertainer. Don't feel obligated to book them because not everybody is a good entertainer. I'm just saying. And well, I, if you I have are been in a position like that, too, where somebody's like, but we're friends. I'm like, okay. and it's my show. And if I keep booking anything. you, the bar right. can go like, why do you keep booking this person? Right. And if you're a friend of somebody, don't think that you're entitled to a booking or whatever, just because you happen to be friends with this person, because you're not entitled to shit. It doesn't matter whether you're friends with them or whether you're fucking them or whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh. Oh. It doesn't like, but again, nepotism, it's, it's real. You just have to kind of look at things and you see like, Oh, mm, yeah. Well, you're, supposed but, to, you're supposed to do that for me. Mm, yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the weird and rowdy, um, <laughs> Martha Stewart, Martha Stewart, Martha Stewart, <laughs> I give it to, so I am a little peeved at this story only because I'll tell you later uh, after I read this, but at 81, Martha Stewart is the cover girl for Sports Illustrated, uh, swimsuit edition. 
Um, this year, the issue will also feature a trans model um, and singer, uh, Kim Petrus, as well as uh, women in their 40s and 50s and curvier women who don't fit into the societal norms of being hot. Um, so the only reason why I'm really mad is because there was a beautiful cover and I can't find it uh, when I looked for it quickly and I'll post it if I find it, but this beautiful Asian woman who is mm. like in her eighties or nineties and she is gorgeous and tattooed. I think. Oh yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. And so I was loving that moment and nobody said anything. Nothing. That was for, was that Vogue? I think so. But I, I, well, I, that's probably why I couldn't find it because I didn't, I couldn't remember the magazine. But beautiful cover. It it didn't require chest, breast, or whatever. But she is gorgeous on this cover, and y'all slept on her for real. Uh, yeah, this is why. This is true. Asian lady did it wonderfully. And then we have Martha Stewart. I was like, no, no, no. I'm mad at this story because we slept on beautiful old girl. Uh-uh. I was like, no, no. Martha can have her moment, but I'm not about it. Um, I have I have that if you want me to, I can try and yeah, share Yeah, throw it. it up on there. Let me see. Because that is a beautiful moment. And there's other pictures of her. Sit down, Martha. Sit down. <laughs> uh, let's see this. Oh, yes. There she is. She is gorgeous. There. I think that's fucking fantastic. Yeah. Look she is... She's 106 years old. Yeah. And a traditional uh, Filipino uh, tattooer, basically. She does, like, the 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 whatever um the, oh, the poke, pokey pokey ooh, thing ooh, ooh. yeah uh but i was but uh yeah. this did not get a moment like how martha is getting her moment I no feel... and it should have because she was was yeah she's absolutely stunning absolutely stunning um this is where misogyny and um privilege know, martha stewart's in white that's room. how that that's you know, what happened I, I mean, props to Martha Stewart. That's great. Whatever, more power to her. I'm, you know, I'm glad to see that Sports Illustrated is branching out and doing things a little bit differently than they used to do, including, you know, having a trans model, women in their 40s and 50s, curvier women, you know, whatever. Fantastic. Um, but yes, no, I, I absolutely agree that that. Uh, I mean, a bigger deal. I mean, she she's white. That's that's the only reason why. Like, oh, oh. So. okay. Um, so, <laughs> so the Supreme Court has refused oh, to block a ban on assault weapons in Illinois. Basically, they're staying out of it, so they're not. Hmm. They right. It's it's kind of interesting. Um, they're not kind of doing anything one way or the other. The second right, the Second Amendment, uh, you know, activists are basically saying, no, you need to block this ban, you need to block this ban, and the Supreme Court's like, we're not going to touch this. Which is funny, because they're not willing to touch that, but they're willing to touch other rights. I, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. Um, but there is a, there's a city um, in Illinois that is looking to ban assault weapons. Um, they're, and I think they're succeeding. I think they're succeeding, which is why the you know it's it's. it's uh... I heard, and I may be wrong. You can correct me. That Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Well, Joe Biden has to do the executive order. So anyhow, um, that is supposed to do. That's supposed to uh, have people have stricter uh, background checks and things ain't gonna do shit not gonna do shit they need to flat out ban assault weapons like there's no i heard you i heard you uh, Uh, but uh, according to this bullshit (laughs) 
<laughs> so according to this, um, you know, new order, but it has to be put in place by Congress, which made my eyes roll so hard because I was like, they're not going to do it. Um, and so there are attempts happening around the country. Um, and like, as soon as they get to a certain level, they stop. Mm-hmm. And so, um, again, I will emphasize that if you believe that guns should not be, uh, or assault weapons, um, should not be a public, I feel like there's like a way of saying this, like they should be privately held or they should be, I don't think assault weapons should be, assault weapons shouldn't be available outside of the military, period. There's no reason why anybody in the private sector should own an assault weapon. None. Zero. So, um, there are people. And don't give me this bullshit about I'm hunting. That's not fucking hunting. <laughs> hunting people. Um, excuse me. Um, but there are ways of changing policy. Um, and we know some of those people. And mm-hmm. so, um, like, you just have to. Politics is a thing. You just gotta. That's why people get so tired of it because it it's something that you just keep repeating yourself and you think everybody heard you but there's one person in the back that changes the whole room's vote um kind of thing so that's why we keep repeating it if you believe in it go go take care of it city level yep all the way up uh let's see speaking of politics city level and all that um colorado springs has elected its first black non republican why does that make me laugh? Um, Non-Republican mayor, say his name. Yemi Mobilade. Okay. Uh, ran as an independent, beating out the Republic Republican incumbent in the runoff election. Um, I think that's amazing. I just hope Colorado that... Springs is a is a very conservative yeah, like, bubble that's what I was in Colorado. Say. I hope that the people inside that bubble don't mm, kind of like how the Obama era turned mm. into like the Trump era, mm. so to speak. And people were like, no, this is our true colors. <laughs> Speaking of true colors, <laughs> hold on to your hats. Uh, for oh this my God. Folks, this one's Cause this is not one. okay. Here we go. So, DeSantis signed into law a gaggle of new restrictions on trans health care, drag shows, bathrooms, and pronoun usage today. He stated that Florida will remain a refuge of sanity and a citadel of normalcy. Okay, first it's of like all, what? Does he know where state. the fuck he lives? There's nothing in Florida that is sane or normal. Why do you think Florida man is like a whole thing? So, pause. Are we taking out all of Miami nightclubs because those are different than any club I've ever right. been to. Right. Um, are we taking out, you know... He obviously he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. It's, you know... So, included in these bills, trans youth are prohibited to receive any sort of gender-affirming care, including hormone blockers. Mm. Under the new law, it would be considered child abuse and the kid could be removed from the home. Teachers and faculty uh, must use the pronouns that align with the kid's sex assigned at birth. And licenses could be taken away from establishments if minors attend drag shows. Um, That could be any establishment, regardless of whether it's an all-ages thing or not. Another law uh, prohibits trans folks from using a bathroom or changing room that aligns with their gender identity uh, while in government buildings, public schools, prisons, or state universities. Hear me out. I don't agree with this at all. Why are we so obsessed with people's genitals? Why are we obsessed with trans people? Why are we... What? I'd be like, okay, so I'm going to start going into the the women's changing room. You think they'd be okay with that? There's a blind item that Ron is trans? How do you mean? What is that? What? What does that mean? What? I don't know what that means. I don't. That doesn't make. Type any that sense. again. Type that again. I don't know what that means. Um. But can you imagine? Like, what? What do you think? Like, 
uh, what do you think a woman would be more comfortable with? A trans woman going in and changing in a changing room or me going in and changing in their changing room? Who do you think they'd know. be more comfortable with? I've accidentally with? walked into a women's bathroom before. And you know how feminine I am. People still will be like, uh-uh. Right, what? like... <laughs> right when I first started transitioning, because I, you know, I've had like short hair and stuff for ever, you know, uh-huh. I'd be at work and I'd be going into the women's restroom and like women would be coming out and they'd be like looking at me and they'd kind of look at the door and they'd think that they were in the wrong restroom. Mm. Like the, the people are so fucking stupid. And I still don't fucking understand. How do I contact fucking Biden at this point? Because legitimately, this shit uh-huh. should not be happening. And it's pissing me the fuck off. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, so I feel like people are insecure. You catch that? You catch that? Mm-hmm. Anybody? 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 Men. Um, I feel like men, cishet men, are afraid of what happens uh, when they become attracted to trans folks. Oh, for sure. But I feel then, like but, I feel but, like these come; these are projections of people's insecurities that they feel protect them. It, it's like, and but it's fucking stupid though because, like. Are they are they worried that if I walk into the men's changing room and I change and they see my genitals that they're gonna want to like they're not gonna be able to control themselves and because I have a vagina no I think it's, they're gonna I like it's... they're gonna immediately be like oh no there's a vagina in here what do we do do we have to touch it we have to touch the vagina so also uh, clearly in 2020 we became very uh, liberated we became very strong during the pandemic. I would say. Um, and there's a lot of things that uh, were written during uh, 2020 that were focused on the queer community and the black community. They don't say that they are, clearly, but mm. um, I feel like we've talked about this before. <clears throat> Cis het white men do not like when minority groups become powerful or when they have an uprising. Um, and for that, drag queens let led the charge. We're going to take them out. We're going to write a law. Oh, well, trans people were, you know, up there with them. Okay, take them out. We'll go back to having our weird, cishet, boring life where we don't know anything about sex because they come to sex trivia. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. uh, and then we're supposed to live in this boring, hide it because we don't want to see it. That's where I I feel that people are so insecure. They're fucking insecure about themselves. They write these things into law. And these are the same people that have, that advocate for the, oh, I didn't know she had a penis kind of deal. And they feel like they're embarrassed. So they write some huge law about, you know, like they make shit up sometimes. And so like, that's like the whole like gay panic bullshit basically it's like i thought he was hitting on me so i you know i that's why i murdered him or you know oh i thought she was really hot and we were making out and then all of a sudden i realized that she was a pre-op trans woman and oh my god like she tricked me and uh, did she though did she because i'm a cop bullshit on that but i also was an athlete in a locker room where men touched each other so I'm like, I'm like, why are you, my, my question still remains, why are you so obsessed with people's genitals? Because if I were to walk into a changing room or a men's restroom, unless you told me to take my fucking pants down, you would have no fucking idea that I was not born a man, that I was not assigned male at birth. And mm. it's... It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. And I think that there's something, like I said, I think there's some weird, like, there's something weird in 
cisgender heterosexual men's brains where they, and I think this is, you know, like I said, rather than teaching people, you know, don't sexually assault someone, we teach people don't get sexually assaulted. Yes. And it's like, if, you know, like I said, if I were to go into a men's restroom and take my clothes off or go into a men's changing room and take my clothes off, it's like, okay, so you see that these people are, you know, oh my God, there's this person and this person kind of looks like a dude, but there's also a vagina, which means that we probably have to fuck it, which, you know, whatever. And then you send a trans woman into a men's changing room and, you know, the men are like, oh my God, this woman here is really fucking hot you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden she takes her clothes off and oh my God, there's a penis, which means that they're really a dude, which means that now we have, but I was like attracted to him. So that makes me gay. So what do I do now? I have to beat him up or something like it. They're like, it's really fucking ridiculous. And I'm so fucking angry that it's 2023 and this is still a thing. Thank God we have the governor that we have right now, because otherwise we would be thoroughly fucked. But I'm going Um, to say again that leaving this shit up to states' rights is mm -hmm. horseshit and needs to not happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say again that the last time things were left up to states' rights, it did not go so well for them. And... I don't know what needs to happen. I don't know how we get a fucking message across to fucking Biden. I don't know if I have to sit here and do TikTok after TikTok after TikTok, because I fucking will if I have to. But the fact that there's still nothing from Washington is so disappointing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. There has been, I haven't heard shit. At this point, I almost like care less about whatever Band-Aid they plan on putting over like gun control because that's not going to happen. It's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. And this isn't even being addressed and I don't understand it. Well, Gage says uh, a trans woman uh, here found uh, was found not guilty for indecent exposure after being jailed for using a locker room in the YMCA. Like I almost want to like go to Florida and then just start going and using all the women's rooms and see how fast I get arrested. <laughs> like, it, cause it's that, that the, the, the thing is though, is that that is what it's that kind of shit that will finally make people. I don't know. It's like, well, you, you want to, uh, okay. You, the, you, you, I can't use the bathroom that aligns with my gender identity. Okay. Well then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into oh, this women's Ohio. room right okay. here and see what happens. And, like, you know, the they're going to, they want to try to arrest me. They want to do whatever. It's like, fantastic. Well, like, pretty soon they'll say, you know, like. And see what happens. I, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the silliness to drop. Because if we keep letting stuff like this happen, things like <clears throat> black people eating, you know, stereotypical foods will not be allowed. You must eat bland chicken on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays and not gather as a group after church. How ridiculous does that sound? Tell me it sounds ridiculous and then put in there that trans people can't be anywhere. That's what these laws say to me. They say you cannot be anywhere or exist. And that's exactly what it is. They're they're trying to make it so that we don't exist, even though it doesn't matter how many fucking laws they passed, we're not going to not exist. And Vinny, and uh, if anything, it's going to make you should us- be, but I think that you should be. Like, and and that's the thing. It's like, all it's going to do is it's going to piss people off. And when you piss a group of people off, that's... Well, and then that's when they start writing other laws. Because we're focused on the trans rights. Mm -hmm. We're focused on queer things that affect us. And then all of a sudden, oh, we're going to, you know, throw this little tax in here. So when you get your liquor license... um, Mostly the gay bars, the yeah, we'll tax that license like, way more. I, I there are there are um, nonprofits that are setting up funds to help people move out of states like Florida and Arkansas and things like that because of these bills. Uh, frankly, I would fucking love 
I would fucking love to see a mass exodus of queer and trans people from states like Arkansas, states like Florida. Like, I just move, move the fuck out and watch the state's revenue. And I uh, can, somebody asked me about this earlier. Um, maybe it was last week, but um, Disney, yes, is a little flip floppy, but they are still supporting some of the folks, not all of the folks. They have backed down a little bit. Uh, not enough. Um, and they're also fighting against good old what's his name? DeSantis. And so, like, there's a weird little area, gray area, that is becoming very telling that um, we want things back to cishet white 1950s America where we can ride on the back of trucks and throw rocks at people. Mm. Yep. Tell me I'm wrong. We'll Tell bring me back I'm wrong. the good old lynchings, you know, because that's, that's Tell the me easiest I'm wrong. way to take care of things. We're going to make America great again, remember. That's the whole point. Like mm. I, I like Death I, I, scientist. That's oh pretty much God. it. Like <laughs> that's literally what he's doing, you know. And like this shit blows my mind. I would. I, I just. I. I want to see a fucking mass exodus. I want to so, see people get the fuck um, out of those states. Also, and, the person that thinks of like, what else could we be spending this money on? So here in Arizona, well, if you're in Arizona, if you're in Florida, education things. would probably be a good start. They have a huge homeless po- population in Florida. In fact, they have camps. Mm-hmm. What are they doing with that money? If instead of focusing on people that are trying to better them their, <clears throat> themselves and live their authentic life, why not help the people that need the help? Or oh no, we don't. Know, we don't do that. We don't. We don't do that. No, no, <sighs> no. We don't want to do that. Like, we have all this fucking money and we just, we're, we're fine. We just, we'd rather spend it on, you know, pushing kids towards, you know, harming themselves because they're not getting the care that they need, but it's fine. It's fine. Put more money into mental health as a state. Oh no, man. we don't want to do that. All these fucking politicians would lose their jobs. Come on. All the Republicans me. would be classified as like mentally unstable. <laughs> With pensions coming up and mortgages close to paid. I get it. That's easier said than done. I I, I, I get it. Believe me, I do. I I just... I you put your whole life into it. I hate that people continue to, you know, put money into a state that doesn't give a shit. Like, literally just wants them dead. Like, I, it blows my fucking mind. And again... The silence from Washington is definitely. And isn't that the same state that doesn't want us to say gay? Mm. Yeah. It's offensive to yeah. the politics. To all the things. All the things. Because gay is not a new word. Queer is not a new word. None of this is fucking new. None of it. Like, I. I just feel I like don't... there's this weird vibe of like, they just. They put a hat in the middle of the room and they're like, hmm. Like, I don't know how to get don't fucking look at Biden's nose. attention and be like, yo, what the actual fuck? Because something needs yeah, to like And I don't June. even know how to do it. Like, I, Oh, yeah. The book banning. Oh. What am I saying? If you want to put some money, maybe some education. Because if you, like, spent money on education, maybe books. this shit wouldn't be happening. Just saying. Uh, anyway, uh, I could go on and on. What gigs do we have coming up? Uh, oh. We're going to be at Phoenix Fan Fusion. This is true. We have June Fan Fusion. Second. Um, so June second. Uh, for those of you going to Phoenix Fan Fusion, and I highly recommend you do. It's a good time anyway. It's like it's it's just it's fun. Um, so it runs June. Second through what is it the fifth fourth 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 so the second <laughs> through the fourth I don't even know um, June second is the uh, drag show that starts at seven and then immediately after is the burlesque show both are going to be fantastic I'm so excited for both of them and then uh, don't forget you have two that fabulous on... shows 
at the same time. Right? It's like Happening back to right back. It's like a after, double feature. Yeah. Um, and then Friday at noon and Saturday at noon, uh, there will be t- a drag story hour. Fridays is, um, what was I going to say? Um, like <laughs> fantasy, fairy tale themed. Um, and then uh, Saturday is sci fi themed. Um, so both will be fun. Um, if so, if you're around Fan Fusion, come check us out um, at all the things. Uh, the drag show, I believe, is all ages. Um, the burlesque show definitely is not all ages. <laughs> so don't make your kids do that. I'm at Drink Me Tea Room on oops. oh June twenty eighth. June twenty eighth. Um, but before that, um, we will have sex <clears throat> trivia. Is it June tenth? I keep June tenth. Well, my... Okay, because my calendar is not. We need to set up a... an event. I yeah. Um, as long as we must not show it to the millennials, they. Oh my god! I'm just kidding. Um, they need to come more than anybody, um, figuratively and literally. Um... <laughs> Yes. Anyway, um, yes. So uh, June tenth, sex trivia at Gracie's Tax Bar, um, and then on June twenty eighth, I will be at Drink Me Tea Room. Is that in Tempe? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'll post are we more doing details as it gets close? Is next week our finale or the week after? Oh, Do we decide next week because the week after is right before con? Yes, it's next week. Next week. So next week, folks, is our season. God, that came pretty quick. I know. Season 11 finale. I almost said season 10. Season 11 finale is next week. So who knows what we'll be doing? Could be anything. Um, (laughs) No fucking clue. We plan things sometimes. (laughs) But uh, then we'll be taking a break for the summer like we usually do um, for until like fan fusions over things are, are, you know, Um, but uh, keep an eye on the Patreon. We will be posting things there. We'll be trying to find some fun things to do, some extras. Um, I have some ideas for some fun extras for Patreon. Um, Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to miss us during the summer, make sure you subscribe to the Patreon uh, and catch all the things that will be happening there. I have an idea, too. But I don't want to say it right now. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. Uh, So. But look uh, on Patreon for that. But look on Patreon for that. With that being said, uh, make sure that you tune in next week um, and join us for our season 11 finale, which means at the end of the summer, we'll be rolling into season 12, if you can believe that shit. <laughs> Lord. That um, is crazy. I feel like we that just did a photo shoot. I know. That's can fine. We just used our... Uh, for the next season? <laughs> thanks for tuning in, Vinny. Please be safe out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah, that helps. Um, so <laughs> Yikes. Uh, all right. Um, thank you to everyone for joining our Wednesday night conversation. And thank you to all of you who watch live and watch on the replay. And with more than, we're almost at 11,000. I don't know how this keeps happening. I don't know who's listening to us. But somebody if you is. are. It's one person just are. keeps. <laughs> Um, thanks for listening. And you could always leave us a review. Um, hope nothing less than five stars. I um, Please and just want to let you know that that's all we'll accept. <laughs> um, and um, we will see you next week for your Wednesday night conversation. Good, Good night. night. Let me see if I can play the outro. We're going to try it. <laughs>